from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2021 virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon 2021 virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host. Here on theCUBE, we've got Steve Gordon, Director of Product Management Cloud Platforms at Red Hat. Steve, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Hey John, thanks for having me on. It's great to be back. So soon we'll be in real life. I think North America show, this is for the Europe virtual. I think the North America one might be in person. It's not yet official. We'll hear, but we'll find out, but looking good so far. Um, but thanks for all your collaboration. You guys have been a big part of the CNCF. Uh, we've been covering on the Cube, as you know, since the beginning. Uh, but I wanted to get into the edge conversation that's been going on. And first I want to just get this out there. You guys are sponsoring Edge Day here at KubeCon. Uh, I want you to, to bring that together for us because this is a big part of what Red Hat's talking about. And frankly, customers, the edge is the most explosive growth area. It's got the most complexity. It's crazy. It's got data. It's got everything at the edge. Everything's, everything's happening. How important is Kubernetes to edge computing? Yeah, it's certainly interesting to be here talking about it now and having kind of a dedicated Kubernetes edge day. I was thinking back earlier, I think it was uh, one of the last in-person KubeCon events, I think, if not the last, uh, the San Diego event, where there was already, already kind of a um, cresting of interest in edge and kind of topics on the agenda around edge. And it's just great to see that momentum has continued up to where we are today. And um, really more and more people, not only talking about using Kubernetes for Edge, but actually getting in there and doing it. Um, and I think, you know, when we look at why people are doing that, they're really leaning into some of the things that they saw as strengths as Kubernetes, of Kubernetes in general, uh, that they're now able to apply to Edge computing use cases in terms of, you know, what they can actually do in terms of having a common interface to this very powerful platform that you can take to a multitude of footprints, a growing multitude of footprints, um, be they your public cloud providers, where a lot of people uh, may have started their Kubernetes journey or their own data center, uh, to these edge locations where they're increasingly trying to do processing closer to where they're collecting data, basically. You know, when you think about edge and all the evolution with cloud native, what's interesting is Kubernetes is enabling a lot of value. I'd like to get your thoughts. What are you hearing from customers around use cases? I mean, you are doing product management. You've got to document all the features, the wish list. You have the keys to the kingdom on, on what's going on over at Red Hat. You know, we're, we're seeing just the amazing connectivity between businesses with hybrid cloud. It's a game changer. Haven't seen this kind of change at this level since the late eighties, early nineties in terms of inflection point impact. This is huge. Yeah. What are you hearing? I think it's really interesting that you use the word connectivity there um, because the, one of the you know, first stage computing use cases that I've really been closely involved with and working a lot on, um, which then kind of grows into the others is around telecommunications and 5G networking. And you know, the reason we're working with service providers on that adoption of Kubernetes as they build 5G basically as a cloud native platform uh, from the ground up is they're really leveraging um, what they've seen with Kubernetes elsewhere and taking that to deliver this connectivity, which is going to be crucial for other use cases. If you think about uh, people, whether they're trying to do uh, automotive edge cases, where they're increasingly putting uh, more sensors on the car to make smarter decisions, but also things around the infotainment system using more and more data as well. If you think about factory edge, all of these use cases build on connectivity as one of the core fundamental things they need. Uh, so that's why we've been really zoomed in there with the service providers and our partners trying to deliver uh, 5G networking capabilities as fast as we can and the throughput and latency benefits that come with that. If you don't mind me asking, I got to just go one step deeper if you don't mind. You mentioned some of these use cases, the connectivity, you know, IOT was the big buzzword. Okay, IOT, it's an edge, you know, it's uh, operational technology or it's a, uh, a dumb endpoint or you know, a node on the network has connectivity, it's got power, um, it's a purpose-built device, it's operating, it's getting surveillance data, whatever the hell it's doing, right? It's got edge. Now you bring in more intelligent, which is an IT kind of thing, state, databases, caching. Is the database too slow? Is it too fast? What do I, you know, so again, this is, brings up more complexity. Can you just talk about how you, how you view that? Because this is what I'm hearing. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think there's a real 
uh, spectrum when we talk about edge computing, uh, both in terms of the footprints and the locations and the various constraints that each of those imply. And sometimes those can be constraints can be, as you're talking about, a uh, specially designed board, which has you know, a very specific uh, chip on it, has very specific memory and storage constraints, or it can be a literal physical constraint in, in terms of, I, I only have this much space in this location to actually put something, or that space is uh, subject to excess heat or other uh, considerations environmentally. Uh, and I think when we look at what we're trying to provide, um, not just with Kubernetes, but also Linux, is a variety of solutions that can people, no matter where they are along that spectrum, of the smallest devices where maybe um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux or RHEL for Edge uh, is suitable, um, to those use cases where maybe there's a little more flexibility in terms of what are the workloads I might want to run on that in the future, or how do I want to grow that environment potentially in the future as well? If I want to add nodes, then all of a sudden, you know, the capabilities that Kubernetes brings can be a more uh, flexible building base for them to start with. So with all these use cases and the changing dynamics and the power dynamics between operational technology and IT, which, which you just were kind of riffing on, what should developers take away from that and when they're considering their um, development, whether they just want to app, be app developers, you know, programming the infrastructure or they're tinkering with the underlying some database work or if they're under the hood kind of full DevOps. What's, what, should, what should developers take into consideration for all these new use cases? Yeah, I think one of the key things that is that we're trying to minimize the impact of the developer as much as we can. Now, of course, with an edge computing use case where you may be designing your application specifically for that um, board or device, then that's a more challenging proposition. Uh, but there's also you know, the case increasingly where that intelligence already exists in the application somewhere, whether it's in the data center or in the cloud, and they're just trying to move it closer to that endpoint where the actual data is collected. Uh, and that's where I think there's a really powerful story in terms of being able to use uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift as that interface that the application developer interacts with, but can um, use that same interface whether they're running in the cloud, maybe for development purposes, but also when they take it to production and it's running somewhere else. Uh, I, well, I got to ask you the AI impact because every conversation I have or everyone I interview that's an expert in the, in the, as a practitioner is usually something along the lines of chief architect of cloud and AI. <laughs> You're seeing a lot of cloud SRE, cloud scale architects meeting and also running the AI piece, especially in industries. So AI is a certain component that seems to be um, resonating from a functional persona standpoint, people who are doing these transformations tend to have cloud and AI responsibility. Is that a fluke or is that just a pattern that's real? No, I think that's very real. Um, and I think when you look at AI and machine learning and how it works, it's very data centric in terms of, you know, where what is the data I'm collecting? Um, sending back to the mothership maybe in terms of actually training my model, but when I actually go to processing something, you know, I want to make that as close as I can to the actual data collection so that I can minimize what I'm trying to send back. Um, particularly, you know, people may not be um, as cognizant of it, but even today, you know, many times we're talking about sites where that connectivity is actually fairly limited in some of these edge use cases uh, still today. So what you're actually putting over the pipe is something you're still trying to minimize while trying to advance your business and improve your agility uh, by making these decisions closer to the edge. What's the uh, advantage for Red Hat? Talk about the benefits. What do you guys bring to the table? Obviously hybrid cloud uh, is the new shift. Everyone's agreed to that. I mean, pretty much the consensus is um, public cloud's great. Been there, done that. It's out there pumping out as a resource, but now enterprises are going to keep stuff on premise, especially when you talk about factories or whatever on-premises things that might need stuff on premise. So it's clear, hybrid's happening. Everyone's in agreement. What does Red Hat bring to the table? What's in it for the customer? Yeah, I think I'd say hybrid is um, really evolving at the moment in terms of, I think, you know, hybrid has kind of gone through this transition where first of all, it was maybe, you know, I'm moving from my data center to public cloud and I'm managing both of those through that transition. And maybe I'm using multiple public clouds. And now we're seeing this transition where it's almost that some of that processing is moving back out again, closer to the uh, use case and the data. And that's where we really see it as an extension of our existing hybrid cloud story, which is 
uh, simply to say that we're trying to provide a consistent experience and interface um, for any footprint, any location, uh, basically. And that's where OpenShift is a really powerful um, platform for doing this. Um, but also, you know, it's got Kubernetes at the heart of it, um, but it's also worth considering um, when we look at Kubernetes, there's this entire cloud native ecosystem around it. And that's an increasingly crucial part of why people are making these decisions as well. It's not just Kubernetes itself, uh, but all of those other projects, both directly in the CNCF ecosystem itself, um, but also in that broader CNCF landscape of projects, which people can leverage. And even if they don't leverage them today, know that they have options out there for when they need to change in the future if they need, have a new need for their application. Yeah, Steve, I, I totally agree with you. And I want to just get your thoughts on this because I was kind of riffing with uh, Brian Gracely, who works at Red Hat on, on your team. And he was saying that, the, you know, we were talking about KubeCon plus Cloud Native Con as the name of the conference. He's a little bit more Cloud Native Con this year than KubeCon, inferring and implying and saying that, okay, it's all about Kubernetes, Kubernetes, Kubernetes. Now it's like, whoa, Cloud Native starting to come to the table, which shows the enablement of Kubernetes. We, that was our point. The point was, okay, if Kubernetes does its job, it's creating a, a lever, some leverage to create value and that's being rendered in cloud native. Uh, and that enterprises, not the, not the hardcore hyperscalers and or the early adopters, I call classic enterprise, are coming in. They're contributing to open source as participants and they're harvesting the value and creating cloud native. What's your reaction to that? And can you share your perspective on uh, there's more cloud native going on than ever before? Yeah. I certainly think you know, we've always thought uh, from the beginning of OpenShift that it was about more than just uh, Linux and uh, Kubernetes um, and even the container technologies that came before them. Um, from the point of view of to really build a fully operational and useful platform, uh, you need more than just those pieces. And certainly, you know, that's something that's been core to what we've been trying to build from the beginning. Um, but it's also what you see in the community is people making those decisions as well as you know, what are these pieces I need uh, whether it's fairly fundamental infrastructure concerns like logging and monitoring, uh, where, or whether it's things like trying to enable different applications on uh, top using uh, think projects like Kubevert for virtualization, uh, Istio uh, for service mesh and so on. Um, you know, those are all considerations that have been, people have been making gradually. I think what you're seeing now is, you know, there's a growing consensus in some of these areas within that broad CNCF landscape in terms of, okay, what is the right option for each of these things that I need to build the platform? Uh, and certainly, you know, we see our role is to guide customers um, to those solutions, uh, but it's also great to see that consensus emerging in the communities that we care about, like the CNCF. Great stuff, Steve. I got to ask you a final question here. Um, as, uh, as you guys innovate in the open, I know your roadmaps are all out there in the open. I got to ask you, you know, product management is about making decisions about what you, <laughs> what you work on. Uh, I know there's a lot of debates. Red Hat has a culture of uh, innovation and engineering. So there's heated arguments, but you guys align at the end of the day. That's kind of the culture. What's top of mind if someone asks you, hey, Steve, bottom line, I'm a, I'm a Red Hat customer. I'm going full throttle as a hybrid. We're investing. You guys have the cloud platforms. What's in it for me? What's the bottom line? Yeah, saying? I think the big thing for us is, you know, I talked about that this is extending the hybrid cloud to the edge and we're certainly very conscious that, you know, we've done a great job addressing a number of footprints that are core to the way people have done computing to date. Uh, and now, you know, as we move to the edge, there's a ch real challenge to go and address more of those footprints. And that's um, whether it's delivering OpenShift on a single node itself, um, but also working with cloud providers uh, on their edge solutions uh, as they move further out from the cloud as well. Um, so I think you know, that's really core to the mission is continuing to enable that, those footprints so that we can be true to that mission of delivering uh, a platform that is consistent across any footprint, any location. And certainly that's, that's core to me. Um, I think the other big trend that we're tracking um, and really uh, continuing to work on, you, know, you talked about AI machine learning. Uh, the other, other space we really see Kind of continuing to develop and certainly relevant in the work with the telecommunications companies I do, but also increasingly in the accelerator space, uh, where there's really a lot of new, new and very interesting things happening uh, with hardware and silicon, uh, whether it be kind of FPGAs, EA6, uh, and even the data processing units, 
um, you know, lots of things happening in that space that I think are very interesting and going to be key to the next three to five years. Yeah, and software needs to run on hardware. Love your tagline there. It sounds like a nice marketing slogan. Any workload, any footprint, any location. <laughs> hey, DevSecOps, yeah, you got to sure. scale it up. So good, good job. Thank you very much for coming on. Steve Gordon, Director of Product Management, Cloud Plus with Red Hat. Steve, thanks for coming on. Thanks, John, really appreciate it. Okay, this is the CUBE coverage of KubeCon and Cloud Native Con 2021 Europe Virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host from the CUBE. Thanks for watching. <laughs>